right, if you have your Bibles with you, we'd ask you to turn to Joshua, Joshua 9, and we're going to begin reading in the first verse. Joshua chapter 9, uh, beginning in the first verse. The Bible says, And it came to pass, when all the kings which were on this side of Jordan, in the hills, and in the valleys, and in all the coast of the great sea over against Lebanon, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite heard thereof, that they gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. And when the inhabitant, inhabitants of Gibeon heard that heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and to Ai, they did work willing, wily, and went and made as if they had been ambassadors, and took old sacks upon their asses, and wine and bottles, and old and wine bottles old and rent, and bound up, and old shoes, and and clouded upon their feet, and old garments upon them, and all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. And when they went to jo and they went to Joshua unto the camp of Gilgal, and said unto him and to the men of Israel, We be come from a far country. Now therefore make ye a league with us. And the men of Israel said unto the Hivites, Peradventure as ye dwell among us. And how shall we make a league with you? And they said unto Joshua, We are thy servants. And Joshua said unto them, Who are ye? And from whence come ye? And they said unto him, From a very far country are thy servants are come because of the name of the Lord thy God. For we have heard the fame of him and all that he did in Egypt. And all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites and that were beyond Jordan, and to Shion, the king of Hesh Heshbon, and to Og, king of Bashan, which was Ashtaroth. Wherefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake unto us, saying, Take victuals with you for, your, for the journey, and go to meet them, and say unto them, We are your servants. Therefore make ye a league with us. This is our bread we took, uh, hot for our provision out of the houses on the day that we came forth and go unto you. But now, behold, it is dry and it is moldy. And these bottles of wine which we filled with new, and behold, they be rent. And these are these are garments, and our shoes are become old by reason of the very of the very long journey. And the men took of their victuals and asked not counsel at the at the mouth of the Lord. Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live. And the princes of the congregation swear unto them. I'm going to preach this morning, the Lord being my helper, on the cost of compromise. Dear Lord, we thank you for this book. We thank you for the sound teachings that you've given us down through the years. God, we pray that you would meet with us this morning, that you'd stir us up to your service. Lord, that we might be reminded that you're still on the throne and you still doeth all things well. God, we pray for the lost that meet among us. God, that you would save them this morning. According to your mercy and grace, we pray it by Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, some semi-familiar uh, verses of Scripture uh, that speak of an event that would affect Israel for the rest of their existence and even impacts them today. Now, the first question is, can God's people compromise? And the answer is an absolute yes. But when we compromise as a people, whether it be a church or the nation of Israel or a single tribe or whatever, there is a price to be paid with compromise. Every time we compromise one little thing of the Word of God, 
that it teaches clearly we have compromised the Word of God, and will we get along better with others? Yes, probably, but you'll be far from God. Now, that's on an individual basis, that's on a church basis, that's on a national basis. You know how, <clears throat> you know how our nation's got the shape it is in this morning? We compromised. Uh, we changed our laws. We said it was okay to kill babies. We said it was okay for men to marry men and women to marry women. We said it was okay for children to be brought up in any way that they want to be. We compromised in our public school system. And all of that has come to fruition. But the basic thing was compromise. Now, the first thing I'll ask you is, comprom is compromise easy? You betcha. You know what compromise will do? It'll give you a sense of peace for a short time. It will give you, uh, it, it'll give you, uh, it will take the stress away when people come against you. But that is what it does. The peace is temporary. The peace is not long lasting because what, one or two things will happen. You'll have to go back and say, no, that was wrong. Or you'll have to compromise again. It, it is an ongoing thing. We, you, you know how, why there's so many versions of the Bible today? It got there by compromise. I saw a young lady that I've known since she was this high, and she posted a verse on Facebook and raised in churches just like us. I could tell, you, tell her your name and you would know her, but you know what? She's compromised, and she's using the ESV version now. A good Baptist girl that her dad never preached anything but from the King James Bible. This is where she's at now. You know how she got there? She compromised. And that will happen to us too. And, and we're never above it and it's always the inclination of the flesh to do it. Now let's go back and review this because Joshua did this because he did not ask questions. Now who remembers because it starts with therefore, and when you see that, you always have to look at the previous set of scriptures to know what it says. But if you remember what was the command of God when they came into the land of Israel, he said to kill everyone in sight. Men, women, boys, girls, kill everybody. Now, you know what? That's a very hard thing to think about, and uh, I can imagine what it would be to kill a child. In fact, I'm going to be honest, and if you can, if you can tell me I, I'm, I'm an open ear, I don't even understand the plan of God there. But you know what? I don't have to understand the plan of God. All I have to do is follow it. <laughs> that's very hard. I mean, that's hallelujah stuff as long as it's going your way. But when, it's, when it comes to killing an innocent child, listen, I'm not going to lie to you. I question that. I don't understand God's plan for the, for, the, uh, for the taking of Israel, but I do know this. They violated God's plan. They never even got a tenth of the land that they were promised, and they lived in misery most of the days of their life. How did they get that? By compromise. How are we going to get in a situation where God's no longer meeting with us? We'll arrive there by compromise. And so it says in the beginning, and it came to pass when all the kings which were on this side, meaning the side that they had just crossed, on this side, Jordan, in the hills and in the valleys and on the coast of the great sea over against Lebanon, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, heard thereof. What they heard thereof was two things. Number one, the great victory over at, uh, over at Jericho. And then they also heard of the problems at Ai. Now, how did that little tiny town of Ai impact God's people? Well, they defeated him on the first battle. And you know why? They compromised God's plan. He said, take every one of them. And, and they looked at Ai and said, you know what? That's just a little one. I, I would just say, it'd be like taking down Carlisle, right? 
It, it, it's just a little bitty thing, and, 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 and we'll give everybody else a break and just send a few. And you know what? In the flesh, that seems smart. But they were beaten that day. And they were defeated that day. And immediately when they went back carrying God's plan, they took them out again. See, it is an absolute necessity to follow God's plan. It's not our situation. It's not our responsibility to understand God's plan. It is our responsibility to follow God's plan. And again, sometimes it makes no sense to us, but it is what it is. You know what? Uh, uh, this tragedy with Brother Hilly, I don't understand it. But I do know this, it's God's plan. It, it would not have happened outside the will of a sovereign God. Verse 3, And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and to Ai, they did work wildly. Now, I want, you, uh, I want you to look at two things. First of all, the reputation of God's people. The reputation of God's people is that they were being successful. Now remember this, when God's people are successful, the devil's on rage. He, he, he is out trying to take us down, trying to think of new methods, trying to do things that will impact us. And so very much, I want you to see this little, it says uh, that they thought wildly. Y'all remember, I know all of us older folks in here, y'all remember wildly, coyote? Uh, same thing. It means he's thinking ways to get out of something. Thinking ways to... See, they knew that they were nothing for Israel. So they had to go to plan B. If you can't beat them, join them. Right? Now, that sounds good on the service. Israel has more people. But does it follow God's plan? And certainly it does not. We live in a very strange day where, you know what? Most that is called Christian don't even know what God's plan is. We are to be a different people. It is not for me to question why. It is for me to be obedient to that. Come out from among them and be you separate and touch not the unclean thing. That's what God teaches, so I have to do it. I don't need to know why he said that. All I need to do is do it. But you don't find people, you know why people don't follow things like that today? They were never taught to follow their parents that way. Uh, yeah. I don't know about y'all, but if I ever said why to my parent, to mama, she would say, I don't even tell you why. So that, that's the extent of the answer I got, right? And, uh, and, and so we see that we need to have that level of, of obedience to our Lord God. They did work wildly and went and made as if they had been in, um, ambassadors and took old sacks upon their asses and wine bottles old and rent and bound up and old shoes and, and clouded upon their feet and old garments upon them and all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. Now, I want you to see their next step is to change their appearance. All through the Bible, and this I have gained understanding after sincerely studying the Bible for 35 years, is this. Your clothes is for identification. If you want to question why there's a garment for a man and a garment for a woman, I'll tell you why it's for identification. If you go back here to these bathrooms and you can't read English, you're going to find the right one. And you know why? There, there, there's a symbol there for identification. And so what did these people do? They were working wildly. I know we'll make them think we've been out on, an, on a long journey. I'm going to put on some old clothes We'll take some moldy bread. And if they don't, if, if, if they're not questioning it, you know what? They believe we'll be looking, been looking for them a long time. See, the devil has that plan for you too. He's always working wildly. He'll find your weakness, and that's where he'll stab you. He, that, that's where he'll, he'll focus his attack. 
And, and that's exactly what occurred here. They presented themselves to be, to be something they were not by what they wore and by what they carried. You know what? Just because somebody comes in here packing a King James don't mean that they believe the same thing we do. Right. They work wildly. And, and so we see that uh, they had very deliberate attack on the Lord's people. Verse 6, and they, meaning those individuals, the, those people from Gibeon that wanted to be preserved, and they went to Joshua unto the camp at Gilgal and said unto him and to the men of Israel, we be come from a far country. Now, therefore, make ye a league with us. Now, you be very, very cautious who you enter in cooperation with. Uh, I'll give you one that you don't want to get involved with, and, and, and that's the lodge. That's a league you're entering in. That, that is promising things and entering a covenant that you don't want to be part of. Right. You know, uh, and I don't know much about uh, fraternities and sororities in school, but uh, I had a very good friend that was in a sorority in nursing school. Uh, I still think of her often today. And uh, she wouldn't tell me a whole lot about it. They, very, any kind of secretive society, watch out for her. They, they, they weren't supposed to tr talk about what the sisters did. But she did tell me this, and she said, this is what, your freshman year, you had to go through all these things and stuff. And at the end of your freshman year, they put you in a casket. Well, ain't nobody going to put me in a casket before it's time. Right? And then they would put you in the casket, and they would tell, tell they could hear through the casket door, and they, they would repeat this thing, and then they would jump out of the casket and become a sister. You know what that sounds like to me? That sounds like trying to be born again. Right? See, that, 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 they're mimicking what God does. They're mimicking it. And that's what these old folks were, from Gibeon were doing. They were mimicking so that they could be a part of Israel. But they were not a part of Israel first. And God's people would violate the command of God in order to take them in. And you say, man, Israel's a, a, a bunch of jerks. We do the same thing all the time. <laughs> a lot of people don't preach on this anymore. Uh, and that is uh, the association, the Southern Baptist Association. You know why I'll never be a part of that? Because you're entering into covenant with that. And they use everything but the King James in the modern day. I, I don't. Be, and you know what? If they're out there and they're like, "Oh, and I've had them all tell me that here," they finally give up on me in Stewart County. And uh, but oh, we reach so many people more than you do. And I said, "Well, what are you reaching them with?" Right? If I go down the line in the nursing home and ever buy and give everybody the same medicine, you know what? It'll kill some of them. Yeah. And some of them it'll help, and some of it will make no difference at all. And so if I'm going to support something, are they, are they preaching the King James Bible to English-speaking people? And the people that are not English-speaking, are they, are, are, are they using a sound translation as clear and direct as the King James Bible? What are they doing? I, I would want to know that. And so we find, we find then... That it is, it, 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 it is. You know what compromise really is? It's treason. It is joining with the enemy. Verse 7. And the men of Israel said unto the Hivites, Peradventure ye dwell among us, and how shall we make a league with you? Now, they started out good. Literally, <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> we ain't making no league with you. But it did not last long. See, this is another thing about Satan and his ministers. They will keep on you and keep on you and, and beg you and push you. They'll worry you to death, and that's exactly what they did here. Verse 8, and they said unto Joshua, we are thy servants. Now, I've never had a servant, uh, but that'd be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. 
go get me some Coke. Go get me a tea. You know, and, and I don't know about y'all, but when we was home, we always had TV, and my brother, and, and he called the shots. He's seven years older than me. Larry changed the channel. And you know what I did? I got up and changed the channel. <laughs> right? And it, 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 would be, it would be cool to, if you didn't have remotes today, you know, serve go change the channel. Uh, and they were saying, we'll do that for you. I mean, that's enticing to the flesh, ain't it? That, that's something you don't have to go in and cook and, and, and worry about it. Or if you like to cook, you go cook and, that, and they clean up the dishes. I mean, it, it, it sounds very appealing to the flesh, right? Verse 9, and they said unto him, uh, uh, notice he does ask two things in verse 8. Who are ye? And from, when, from whence come ye? Now, while those seem to be really, really good questions, this is the answer from the Almighty. It doesn't matter. When he began to question, well, you know, who are y'all? He was already thinking, I may not kill you, but what was God's plan? You know what? This is what people don't realize, that God's plan always has seemed a little harsh to God's people. You know, I've often thought about the fruit in the midst of the garden, the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and the fruit of eternal life. And you know what? I bet they were very appealing, don't you? I bet they look like a big old red juicy apple on a tree. Now, unlike the photos, I don't think it was an apple, but... <laughs> But I bet it looked as good as an apple, don't you? Probably better. But God's simple directive was, don't eat it. Don't eat it. Now, Adam thought he knew more than God, and Adam threw in there, don't eat it or don't even touch it. He must not trust Eve very far to even, you know, to lie to her and add to God's command. <laughs> but, uh, but that's what he did. And so we find a very difficult command to understand, kill everybody on the place, and already they're doubting God's plan. They had got a good whipping down at Ai and, and, had, and had suffered through that, and yet and still they're once again questioning God's plan. You can illustrate man's depravity again and again because it is our very nature to, to question God's plan. You know what? To many, the doctrine of election and predestination seems harsh. You know what? Just love it and accept it and quit, quit questioning God's plan. I, I, don't know, I don't need to know why he, why, why he did not, he's not going to call some. All I need to know is that's how it is. And accept it, right? Uh, not only accept it, embrace it, and love it, and say, blessed be the name of the Lord. And so their, their, God's righteous plan was to kill everybody on the place. Verse 9. And they said unto him, from a very far country, thy servants are come because of the name of the Lord thy God. For we have heard the fame of him and all that he did in Egypt. Now, I want you to see that the lie begins. First of all, they lie about the origin. You know what, church? You're not going to have people come up to you and say, I'm a Satanist, and I'd really like to join your church. Right? Well, I'm just from down under the hill, and we've been watching y'all, and uh, I see the ladies come in and out dressed nice. We'd like, to, we'd, we'd like just to visit for a little while. You know what we need to ask people along the way? Well, where were you baptized? What Bible do you believe there is for the English-speaking people? What do you believe concerning the Lord's church? See, we, we need to question those things, don't we? And, and so we find here that Joshua is being duped by a lie. We, we love y'all. We've heard of your fame. We've heard of your success. Verse 11. Wherefore our elders and our inhabitants of our country spake unto us, saying, 
take victuals with you for your journey and go and meet them and say to them, we are your servants. Therefore, make, now make us a league with us. This our bread we took hot for our provision out of our houses on the day that we came forth and go unto you. But now, behold, it is dry and it's mine. So I want you to see they immediately, like the modern day people, began to show physical signs that they're with God. Now we saw at the beginning of the chapter how they took this moldy bread right from their house and throwed it in and, and, and was heading out with it. But they were saying, see how moldy our bread is? We left a long time ago looking for you. See how our clothes are all worn out? We've rode so long, I don't even have, uh, I don't have any pants around my ankles anymore. We've been out a long time hunting for y'all. Now, that was a lie, and it was not questioned. That was a bald-faced, deliberate lie. See, the, the, the wicked will do that for you. They, they will lie about your situation. They will lie and say, yes, I've been born again, when they don't even know what you're talking about. Yes, I've been baptized down at the Church of Christ two weeks ago. And, and, and they will have fake things to give you. We as the Lord's people, we need to be akin to that. And we need to be ready for that. Because deception is there. Compromise will come. Now, read on with me, and then I'm going to give you a couple examples. Down to verse 14 now. And the men took of their victuals and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. Now, two things. They took of their food. You know what diet need, New Testament needs? Right here. You know what diet New Testament needs? is these songs that have been sung for ages. We don't need anything new. We don't need anything bright and airy. We need to stick with the diet that works. And so we see that just after a moment, and since he's talking to Joshua, I'm assuming Joshua was included in this, they start eating of the world's diet. You know what that is? That's compromise. That, that, there, there's a call. Can you go if you're saved and, and jump in with that mess? Yes, you can, but there is a cost involved. Look at your children. Look at your grandchildren. Is it something you want to compromise over? Will it make your lives peaceable for a while? But is it worth the cost? <clears throat> And that it certainly is not. It's not worth the cost. And, and, and so they take of the stuff that's brought to them. They began to consume it. They changed their spiritual diet. And they never consult the Lord. End of verse 14. And they sought not counsel. You know, the most wise thing you can ever do when you're not sure about something is ask people that pray. Ask people that love this book. Ask people that abide in the Lord's churches. Look unto that for, the, for your own benefit. And, and the Lord will bless that. The, the counsel of God would have been this. Kill them. Take them out. They're, they're, they're enemies of God. They're enemies to the word of God. Flee yourself from them. You do not need them. And these people were with them the rest of their days and was a huge part of the fall. Remember Hezekiah? What did he do when he began to take the temple? And, and he was the next in line. So he wasn't stealing it. He, he was assuming it. He took Ashtaroth down to the temple and set it up. You remember that? Where do you suppose they got Ashtaroth at? These people right here, they, that, that, that was their God, right? <laughs> you know, when someone comes in, you need to look through the stuff they have. Remember, remember when uh, the uh, Israel and his 12 sons were going in, and uh, Leah's daddy chased them down. You all remember that? And Rachel was there. And, they came in there, Rachel had a bunch of 
a bunch of gods in her, in her, in her basket, in her, in her trunk. And she lied about it. Everybody says that Rachel was the chosen wife. Most certainly she was not. Rachel was the wife of rebellion. Rachel was the wife from which she died in labor with the baby she was expecting. You ever thought about that? She, what, what was her excuse that she couldn't let him look into the trunk? Oh, the way of the woman is upon me, meaning that she was having her cycle. And you know what? That was a bald-faced lie. Why was it a bald-faced lie? She was expecting a baby. <laughs> she was expecting Benjamin, right? See, people will lie to you over the things of God, won't they? And, and so we find that they made this horrible compromise and it followed them all the days of their life. Verse 15, and Joshua made peace. Uh, you know what the very best thing to make peace is? It's not compromise, it's just come out from among them. Right? It isn't a blessing that our Lord God in the church age, he hasn't asked us to kill anybody. He said, just keep away from them. <laughs> what, what, what a blessing. How much easier is that than going out and killing people? And we can't even do that. We can't even accomplish that a little bit. Just don't be around them. Just, just don't put your approval on that mess. Just, just, just stay with your people and all will be well. Do you, do you think come out from among them and be a separate so that we'll look like freaks? No, it's for our spiritual benefit. We don't need that stuff. And, and so it was, and you know the rest of the nation, the national story of Israel and how they fail and why they fail time and time and time again. Now, very quickly, I want you to look at me in Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, and for, uh, we'll drop down to uh, verse 20 for time's sake. Now we're in the modern church age in chapter, in Romans 1. This is the church that would default. It is the church for which the Catholic church would come out of. They're having one of their big heydays today. Everybody so, celebrating Easter, the Feast of Fertility. Uh, they've got their eggs and their buddies running, and they're chasing after fertility and calling it the name of Christ. That, 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 is, that is this group of individuals, and it was going on even then. Now, uh, we'll begin in verse 20. And the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. Now, I want you to notice two things. He said the invisible things, the creation. Well, one day, you know, everybody said, well, election is unfair. Predestination is not right. What will they say? What, you know, how is God going to explain that in the day of judgment? You look out here, beautiful spring morning, uh, the flowers are beginning to bloom, and I notice uh, uh, at, a, at a little spot up by the house, our, our creeping flocks are beginning to come out, and I saw sweet Williams down by the creek, and, and, and uh, oh, Lord, declaring the glory of the mighty God of heaven. You know what? Dear friend, you're without excuse. There is a God on the throne. And not only does he speak to us, he also presents himself in a thousand different ways. And so... Uh, Paul reminds the church at Rome to the lost that were there, listen, you have no excuse. Now speaking of the church, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. You see, we're anywhere in this book where preachers can't be married. You see, we're anywhere in this book where we're to worship the cross of Christ. Do you see anywhere in this book we are, we are to worship the, cruce, the, the Savior as he was on the cross? No, we serve a risen Savior. We don't need statues and pictures of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross because you know what? He's no longer there. He's risen. He's up again. And he's, he's making intercession for you and I. So even then, Paul solved the problems that were coming. Because when they knew him not as God, they glorified him not as God. 
neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Don't imagine anything. Take the word of God for what it says. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God unto an image. Sound familiar? And, and made like to corruptible man, the birds and the four-footed beasts and creeping things. Uh, in other words, he's no more powerful than creation. He is. He spoke this, this thing into being. He, not only is he more powerful, he's Lord. We're under him. He's sovereign. You, you know what? Uh, we almost hit a squirrel coming to the church this morning. Me and Sarah and the girls are driving along. And there was, you know, usually a, a squirrel was scat just in their nature. He was sitting there eating. It must have been good because he was just eating. Best I know, we stopped and went around him. He still was there when we, when we took off. And uh, you know what? Uh, God has dominion over that squirrel. You know why he was there? I guess for whatever reason, God wanted him there. And, you know, and I, I sometimes I go at too fast of a rate, but we just made the corner. And you know why I wasn't going very fast? Because that's the way God wanted it to be. He is a sovereign entity above all. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. If a man of God, and I use that word loosely, brings more honor to himself than he does the God of the Bible, you have a real problem. You need to vacate your pulpit. Because see, if it's not an individual that, that, that focuses everything on the finished work of Christ, he's not the man for the job. He's not telling you the truth. And, and so we see then that these individuals preferred lies over truth. Does that sound familiar? Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause gave God gave them up unto vile affections and even their women did change the natural use unto that which is against nature and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another men with men working that which is in seemingly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their era which was meet or earned or appropriate or right think about the catholic church today there is no telling how million how how many millions of millions of millions of dollars they have paid out to little boys that they're stinking priests abused his children. See, they, they went against what was nature, didn't they? We live in a society today where if you have an issue with a man marrying a man, you're the problem, not them. Sound familiar? See, we need to be different. However difficult it is, however hard it is, we need to go with the Bible. Now, do we have to wear black all the time and white head coverings? Drive a buggy? <laughs> no. But we do have to be different. And you know what? I, I, don't, I, don't, need a, I, need, I don't need an answer. I, I, I don't need a reason, right? All I know, all I need is, well, that's what the Lord says. So I must. I must do it. Yeah. Right? You ever get tired of trying to explain things to people? <laughs> but this is the glorious thing that I have found. Once they're saved, you don't have to explain it to them no more. Right? Because they have ears that hear and eyes that see. Right. And definitely we need that, do we not? We need to see people saved. We need... We need a group that will adhere to the Bible irregardless.